Are you sure you want to go along on this? Because it's a dead of winter in Maine, and we're about to wake up a sleeping bear. Or my name isn't... Bob DeShane, everybody. The Maine Department of Inland Fisheries and Wildlife does a lot of exotic research. Some of the most famous in the country on moose and bear. And also birds, which is why I'm way deep in the woods looking for winter birds. Katahdin Ironworks. It's an historical place now, but 140 years ago, this was a bustling town. Had its own post office. Had a hotel right over there. This was a pig iron factory. It's all gone now, except for a few outbuildings that still exist. This was the blast furnace here. Over there is where they prepared the charcoal. But the real reason I'm here at Katahdin Ironworks is right up there. Red crossbills. If you think you know what type they are, put it in the comments. Maybe it'll start a good argument. So why do a winter bird survey? Well, Maine is the most forested state in the nation. And a lot of the birds from Canada that are wandering around looking for food look here. So we're mapping the entire forest. What birds are where doing what? So 20 years from now, when they do this survey again, they can compare the difference over two decades. Hopefully the news is gonna be good. Possibly it won't. Do you ever wonder why they call them nuthatch? Comes from the same English root as hatchet. And now you can see why. It was seven below zero when I started my first survey this morning. It's warmed up to, oh, low twenties. Problem is of course the ice is still really crunchy. And of course I'm wearing creepers because this road is nothing but glare ice. Yeah, I know, Pine Grosbeak. They've been everywhere this winter. When I walk in these remote logging roads deep in the main woods, I see a lot more than just birds. I see deer. I see moose. If there's open water, I often see otters. If you're a subscriber to this channel, you probably met this lynx already, Canada lynx. There's fishers and there's mink out here. Squirrels. Sleeping squirrels. But the one thing you won't see in the winter is a bear, unless you wake one up. Maine has more black bears than any state east of the Mississippi, and as many black bears as states out in the west three times our size. Maine has a lot of bears. The Maine Department of Inland Fisheries and Wildlife maintains the oldest and most robust bear program in the entire country. I've been along with the Maine bear team on multiple occasions. Let's take a look back at two of those visits. One was in late winter on ATVs. Get the good stuff. All your online stuff, right? Exactly. The other in midwinter on snowmobiles. So here's the deal. Bears do hibernate. They're in a state of torpor. All winter they don't eat, they don't drink, they don't poop, they don't pee, but they are awake. They can hear you coming, and if they think there's any trouble, they can run. Some bears are easy, but these two, these, these, these were trouble. This is Randy Cross. He's handled more bears than anyone in history, alive or dead. We're tracking down a radio collared bear. You've gotta be really quiet because these bears know you're coming and they can bolt away. Once we're close, it's all sign language. The crew carries only tranquilizers. A jab stick for a bear in the den, tranquilizer darts if she makes a run for it. In a state with so many bears, bear management is vital. Overpopulation spreads disease. Crowded bears crowd neighborhoods. This research lets us know if the bear population is healthy, sufficiently fed, and reproducing well. Bears may den in an underground cavity, or on the surface under the roots of a fallen tree or just in a depression in the woods. This one was just snoozing through the winter in a surface hollow. As we got close, we took off. Oh, mister, I didn't go off. Man, can you give me your camera? Right there, right there. Where's she going? Wait. Right there, turn it up. Turn it up. Right there, me. Right there, me. 
Two darts missed, one misfired. In the end, one biologist managed to hit with a jab stick as she ran past. <laughs> you don't often get to see uh, these type of episodes. When we... The story has a happy ending. The sow didn't have any cubs this year, but she was healthy, good weight, no mange or other ailments, and all she needed was a radio battery replacement. We made her comfy, snuck back out, and when the tranquilizer wears off, she'll be right at home, barely remembering anything. Did you start a sheet on mom? I did. But the other bear was a challenge. She's a bear named Shield, an orphan cub that was rescued, raised in rehab, and successfully released to the wild. She's been through this before, and she's got a nice den with a bend in the entrance that makes her hard to reach. Lisa is the smallest amongst us, and she goes in head first. Now get this, the mother bear is awake. She's got cubs, she's got an attitude. She won't necessarily attack, but don't get too close. That's what the jab stick is for. Lisa's first attempt barely misses the mark, a glancing blow that spills most of the tranquilizer. After a 15 minute wait to see if she goes down, it's clear, Shield is still awake and disgruntled. This time, Mitch goes in. It's a tighter fit, but his arms are longer. However, Shield knows the drill and she keeps her attention forward, exposing little of herself to the needle. Suddenly, she lunges, grabs the stick and pulls it in. Round two goes to the bear. At this point, Mitch shortens the stick. It's only two feet long. He's going all the way in. Many minutes pass, but in one split second, shield attention turns to her cubs, and this time Mitch scores. <laughs> oh, man. Really? She was nasty when I first pulled her. She was like, she did not like that. Before long, she's out, and we're in. This is Don Brown. She's the reason Shield is alive and well. Don runs a rehab facility and raised Shield from a cub, always keeping her distance so the bears wouldn't get used to people. She saved the lives of many orphans. The nation's oldest bear study program does more than just save bears. Managing our behavior is just as important so we can all get along. IFNW coaches people how to live in bear country. Take your bird feeders in during the spring. Keep garbage secure. Remember the birds love to lick the grease off barbecue grills. Truth is, we're the ones that need managing. The bears, we're just trying to keep healthy. It was pretty scary. It was like my heart and breathing was, you know, pretty, pretty uh, amped up. And um, so I, I crawled in, uh, and she's in there, and she was quite, quite a ways away, and uh, you know, maybe like five feet. So I had to army crawl in and kind of push some sand out of my, my way to get get uh, situated and um, she was very vocal in there and you know ob obviously was really upset that I with the proximity that I was to her and you know I pose a threat to her and um, so she you know was jaw popping and bluff bluffing and um, you know typical kind of behavior um, like aggressive behavior or warning behavior and uh, she um, I don't know, it was a lot of kind of cat and mouse sort of games that I was playing with her with a stick. She knew she had been, you know, we've handled her previously, so she knew that, that what that stick was, you know, that that was going to be a poke and a sting, and, and uh, she didn't want that anything anywhere near her. So she was, you know, every time I would get it close to her, she would, you know, bite at it or lunge at it, or and uh, at one point it was pretty close to my head, and she came out and grabbed it and sucked it right into the... A lot has happened since this bear den visit. Randy Cross retired. Lisa and Jake, the two biologists on the right, got married and now have two kids. She's pretty round, she's huh? She, I mean, <laughs> she might not be that long, but she's pretty wide. Yeah, she's so jiggly. That's amazing. As for me, when it comes to exotic research from the Maine Department of Inland Fisheries and Wildlife, I'm going to stick with birds. One thing's for certain, I am never going down to that hole. All right, like, subscribe, you know the drill.